What's up, fam? We're here to do a two-year review on our Ryobi 54-inch zero-turn mower. We've successfully made it past year two. Over the past two years, a lot of you have tuned in. You've watched my videos. You watched the unboxing from when I received this and how happy I was. You also saw my one-year review video, which if you missed that one, feel free to check it out. It's somewhere up here. But I think what's most important is to hear up to date what's been happening at this point in time. We are in mid-September, it's 2024. Again, I've had this mower for over two years now. I got it in July back in 2022, and I was one of the very first people to receive this mower. So I've had a lot of use with this mower. I've actually logged about 88 hours of runtime on this, and that's just using it in my own yard. And in my own yard, I do have just over two acres of property. So it's been a great test to be able to see how well the batteries can run, the longevity, the range, and just the power and how well it does on a yard in Florida that's always growing. And this time of year, uh, we get so much rain. So I can cut my yard pretty much every five days. So I'm putting this thing through the ringer. So being that we're at that two year mark, there's a couple of things that I wanna go over today. First of all, I wanna cover maintenance and just what I've had to do to maintain this mower to keep it in its current condition. I wanna talk about the range that I've experienced on a full charge with this mower. I wanna talk about just some problems that I've had with this mower because there is nothing that I'm gonna hide from all of you. I'm gonna be very upfront and if you've seen my previous videos, you understand that I have had a couple challenges, nothing that we haven't been able to overcome. And then finally, the last thing I'm gonna wanna cover is the newest firmware update, which I say newest, but I have no idea when this firmware update came out. Um, I finally reconnected my phone to the Bluetooth on this mower, which is something you can do and I hadn't really done since I first bought the mower. And when I connected to the Bluetooth, it told me there was a firmware update. So we will get to that as well. But let's hop right into this two year review. And I'm thinking you're gonna get a little bit of information out of this that might help you in your buying decision on if this is a good fit for you and your yard and or business. So let's get started. So the first topic is gonna to be about maintenance. And the maintenance on this mower is very minimal compared to what you're gonna be experiencing with your gas running mower or your two stroke type lawn power tools. So the biggest difference is we're not using gas. We're using electricity to charge this mower. And when you plug it in and you charge it, it really only takes a couple hours to get a full charge, which is amazing. It does use a combination of Ryobi 80 volt batteries. Again, this is the 54 inch mower. So depend 54 inch mower. So depending on the size mower you have is gonna determine the amount of batteries that came with your mower. The 54 inch, you do get three of the 80 volt batteries that sit right behind the seat in a compartment. And then you get a combination of four 40 volt, 12 amp hour batteries, uh, which are on the side of the mower. And those can be used on some of your other 40 volt tools, except they are extremely heavy. So I don't recommend using those on your weed eater and your blower if you got them. But if you need to, it's a great source of power. So when we talk about maintenance, we gotta think about those things that we're always having to do just to make sure that it's running optimally. And one of those things is making sure you got the right tire pressure in your tires. I have experienced quite a few flat tires on this, but that has nothing to do with Ryobi. That just has to do with roofing nails and debris that's around the yard. I haven't had anything too crazy. It's mostly just been those roofing nails. I haven't had anything like bark or anything like that puncture the tire. So the tires, like any type of vehicle is gonna be one of those items that you need to maintain. Keeping the correct tire pressure in your tires is gonna make sure that you get the best rolling and the best distance with the batteries and the range. Next is a big one for me, and it's not necessarily a maintenance item you're gonna have to do, but there's a good chance you will have to replace one of these, and that is the cross cut blade adapter. All right, so I just went and uh, grabbed some of these out of my shed because I've got a plethora of these things. But uh, this right here, this is your cross cut blade adapter. It's kind of hard to see. If you go check out some of my other uh, videos, you'll see that I've actually uh, had to replace this multiple times. And the most recent delivery of these I got from Ryobi, when you call customer service, they will send this to you free of charge, at least while you're under warranty. 
but I have had to replace this, I want to say five, five or six times I've had to replace these in my two years, which when you think about it, that's not crazy, but it's time consuming. I got to get the mower lifted. I got to pull it up on my stands and then I got to get under the mower. I got to loosen the blade and I got to swap this out. Interesting side note. I think I've been a guinea pig on these and I think some of my input and feedback might have got them to actually change the material they're using for this. So originally, I'm pretty confident that these were, came in aluminum. They were very lightweight and these little tabs, there's a little half moon and a circle tab that sits into the blades. The blades sit into that and it's what holds the blades in place. So if you run over something and it puts too much stress or power on these motors, it's gonna snap these tabs and then your blades are basically kind of free spinning under there and you hear a little bit of a different noise coming from the actual uh, blade motors. And there's three different motors for those. Ryobi has told me that the point of that was just to ensure that there's not too much stress on the, motor, the blade motors. The problem is, is they were just too dainty, too damn weak. And they're finally, I'm pretty sure these are now made out of steel. It's a lot heavier. I wanna say it's about three times as heavy as what the aluminum one, aluminum uh, part was. But this is a piece that the last time I called Ryobi, I, I said to them, I go, listen, I'm breaking these on average like every five mows. Can you send me a couple of them so I don't have to keep calling in, waiting multiple days, and basically going maybe a week plus where I can't mow my yard. And usually when I go to mow my yard, it's when it needs it. So if I gotta wait a whole nother week, it's just gonna make it that much worse. It's gonna put extra stress, runtime, and energy consumption usage out of the mower. So that's what these cross-cut blade adapters are all about. I'm now a pro at changing them. I can probably change one in about five minutes, but nobody likes getting under there and dealing with blades and having to change stuff out when they're in the mood to go mow their yard and they gotta all of a sudden have to go do something else like that, so. Okay, so our next maintenance item, we've talked about the tires. We've talked about the cross cut blade adapters that have been breaking on me, which again, that's only a item that you have to maintain and do if it breaks. I guess the way to maintain avoiding that would be just don't run over big sticks and logs and things that are gonna put that extra stress on your blades and the motor, and then you don't have to worry about breaking those. But I do think they were built initially a little too weak, and I do think that they've uh, increased it and made it a lot stronger. So I don't know how many people are gonna be dealing with that, but if you are hearing any kind of a weird noise from the mower, and it feels like it's just excess spinning going on, my suggestion would be get under there and make sure that your blades, your two blades that are on one of these adapters are perfectly seated in those little tabs that are built into the adapter. But moving on, the next thing is the actual blades, folks. That's right, the blades of this mower. I have replaced the blades. I wanna say it was only like $40, $40 to get a whole new se uh, three sets of blades. Uh, it did come in a package where it was three sets of blades all together. Again, kind of similar to the uh, blade adapters here, is it seems like the, the replacement blades that I purchased actually seemed to be a little stronger as well. So even the blades that arrived seemed to be a little bit more heavier duty. It seemed like the metal was just a little bit stronger. That might be a suggestion for some of you out there if you guys are experiencing any uh, cutting issues. Obviously you can always sharpen your blades, but maybe you just need to end up replacing them. I had hit quite a few things that were putting some dings and nicks into my blades. And I figured why not just get a whole new set of blades especially since I'm always having to replace those adapters anyway, and I have the blades off the machine. But that's really gonna wrap it up for what we've had to deal with on the maintenance side, besides your standard just charging this thing when you need to, plugging it in, using your actual house power to charge this. Okay, so now the big topic I think a lot of people have when they're talking about electric, what kind of range am I gonna get on this thing? Is this thing capable of mowing acreage? Can, can I cut my entire yard in one mow on one full charge? And when I first got this mower, that was my biggest gripe right out of the gate. It was, I felt it was a little bit lacking. It had stated four to five acres of mowing capability with the 54 inch, and I was having trouble getting two acres fully completed. Once I started to understand the optimal way to mow my yard and, and the settings for the blade speed 
and the run speed on the mower, it did seem to help a lot. And one of the big changes that I did, I started running my blades on full and going between uh, the speed of how fast the mower is going between medium and high, just depending on what I was doing. But that came with one little caveat. When you put this mower in its fastest speed and even the medium speed, this thing moves and it's a heavy mower. So these back tires, depending on if you're doing that zero turn motion on this, the one challenge that you might have is tearing up your yard and your grass, depending on the type of grass you have in the type of yard, how wet that ground might be. You just gotta be very careful. So if, if I'm running in uh, full speed and I got my joystick pushed all the way forward and I'm flying, if as soon as I know I'm getting like within 20 feet of where I need to turn, I will quickly slow this thing down and make my turns pretty slow unless they're wide. If they're sharp turns, you need to take your time. Otherwise, you're going to be leaving some divots and chunks of <laughs> yard. It's going to look like you just took a really bad golf swing with a huge golf club. That's what it's going to look like. So my suggestion is make big wide turns if you're going at that fast speed or really slow the mower down quickly before you make a sharp turn uh, when you're using the zero turn. But going back to the topic of the actual range, understanding how I needed to mow my yard and, and just optimally hit all the edges and corners of everything and, and, and go around obstacles in the yard, I've been able to successfully complete full yard mows of just over these two acres on a full charge. The problem with the mower though is once you get down to a certain percentage of battery, um, I wanna say it's around that like 14% mark, the mower all of a sudden the screen goes to a screen saying, you know, warning you're low on battery. And then once you get down to, I wanna say it's that 10% range, the blades will actually shut off and the purpose of that is to allow you enough run time with the uh, mower to get it back to maybe your trailer or back into your garage, wherever it is. But there is a good amount of range that you can still get on the mower once the blades automatically shut off. I wish there was a little bit more control over that and I wish you could uh, dial it in and let the mower know like you're willing to let it go down to 5% before the blades shut off. But that's my only gripe is that when you get down to those last couple percentage points and you're watching it, you better just figure out what you need to quickly hit last because you will quickly get to that point where the blades shut off on you. But there's one little tip I'm gonna give you and that's something that I've started doing with a bigger yard. If you have a smaller yard, the whole range thing might not be a problem whatsoever. It might not be something that concerns you, but maybe you're using this mower, you know, out there on the, on the commercial side. Maybe you're using this to uh, generate some money, which I know Ryobi doesn't like endorse it and push this as a commercial mower. Doesn't mean people aren't using it that way, but if you're using it that way, then I would imagine you're going to want to cut a couple houses, a couple yards before you have to charge this with how long it takes to charge unless you just have already invested that extra money into excess batteries and you're able to just kind of swap out batteries on the go and keep your mower running all day, which I don't think a lot of people are doing that with what the cost of the batteries are, but that's just something you really need to know. I think the most important thing when you're going out deciding if you're going to spend thousands of dollars on this mower is figuring out how big your yard is and which size mower do you need to really complete the entire mow. Something I've been doing though, and this is just recent, like in the past two months, I started mowing my yard completely differently. And the reason for that was we had Tropical Storm Debbie show up down here in Florida and it completely soaked the Tampa Bay and Sarasota, Manatee County areas People had water just standing for days in my yard, one of those yards that had a bunch of standing water. We didn't have any kind of flooding inside the house, nothing to be concerned about, we're all safe. What we did have, which we didn't, we don't even get this on like hurricanes. I had standing water for days sitting out here in my backyard, not so much the front, all the back, but what it did was it made it where I could not mow this yard, even though we had been getting so much rain. So the grass is growing, it's getting crazy in the back here. I was able to mow the front. And then when this all finally dried out, I was able to mow the back. And it got me thinking, I was like, you know what? Maybe just to make it a little bit more bearable and not make it a, you know an hour and a half long, hour, hour and a half long mow job all at once, maybe I'll start cutting my mows down into two separate days. So what I've started doing is actually staggering, cutting the front and like side, and then the front and the side 
on two different days. And that's not something that I had to do, but it gave me a little bit of extra comfort with my range and the battery time and not always having to like just barely make it. I've been able to get to a point now where I can mow my yard and still have about 20% battery left. If you kind of do those numbers, you'll start to realize that I'm still not getting close to even four acres of runtime. Ryobi told me on the phone way back in the day when I brought this concern up that I should be running at the highest blade speed and the highest drive speed, which I didn't really understand how that would help me achieve four acres unless you just had some big field that was open, you weren't having to avoid things and you could just go full speed down. But I am a strong believer that when you're going at that speed, you're just not gonna have an even cut. Grass is gonna get missed. It's not gonna cut as clean. So I do still run my blades at full speed, but I do tend to be more on the medium speed with the mower, just with all the different obstacles I'm running around and the maneuvering with a joystick. And there's been a lot of comments about operating the joystick on my previous video. Some people love it, some people hate it, some are acclimating and slowly starting to get the hang of it. I've pretty much gotten the hang of it. I can reverse with this thing pretty well. I can uh, avoid hitting a lot of different things in my yard. It is hard to maintain a straight line, I will say that. So when you're close to a fence or you're close to maybe like your vehicle and you really don't wanna hit it, you just wanna take that extra care. I love it. You know, I've never used the zero turn. I made that very clear on my last video. I did not come from owning another type of zero turn mower. I had always push mode. So this is my first actual riding mower, my first zero turn. And I personally love the joystick. I've got the ability to be controlling the joystick with one hand and still using this other hand. Even if I shouldn't, I could still, I could have my phone in my hand. I can have a beer in my hand, a water. Although, if you can think of that scene with uh, Will Ferrell in that movie where he's drinking the wine in the, in the like shaking massager chair and you got wine going all over you, that's kind of what happens when you're on a mower and you're trying to drink something. So I really suggest you use a bottled water or something with a cap on it when you're using your mower. You do have uh, two little cup holders over on the side for your beverage, but it is quite hard to drink something like not out of a straw with an open container when you're on the mower. I had to learn that the hard way. But overall, I will say this, the joystick is awesome. I understand the frustration some people have had feeling that it's a little bit too finicky. I think it just takes practice. You just gotta get used to it. Not all change is good, but for some people, this is gonna actually be a positive. You got people out there that might only have one arm. I know this is a drastic thing to think about, but there might be somebody that only has one arm. Hopefully it's the right arm that they have, but uh, they could use this mower. I don't know how a zero turn is gonna work for somebody without an arm, but that might not apply to a lot of you out there. Let's move on. All right, I wanna talk about some of the problems now. We've already talked about the crosscut blade adapters and how brittle those were. I do think they've made it a little bit stronger now, but uh, let's talk about one of the original problems I had on this mower. If you watched my previous video, we ended up having one of our 80 volt batteries from the get go pretty much be a dud. It wasn't charging properly. So it was causing a lot of issues with the mower. And I will say this, if you tend to have um, a situation where you see that the percentage of battery left on the charge is fluctuating while you're driving, like it's giving you two different percentages, I'll tell you right now, something's up with the mower. You probably have a bad battery in your mower and that's something you're gonna wanna get taken care of. But Ryobi support was great when we had to deal with that. More recently, this was probably about six months ago, the actual charger for this mower, it's a, I mean, it's a heck of a charger that you get for this mower and it's an expensive charger if you need to go buy uh, this, like something happens to yours. Luckily, Ryobi took care of me. The plug on my charger ended up basically melting inside of uh, the plug that I I had it in and your charger will heat up you know this is a lot of power going into these when they're charging it but when i called ryobi they just sent me a brand new charger and these chargers i want to say run like six seven hundred dollars if you go look at like direct tools outlet so let's see for problems we've had the uh, cross cut blade adapters which we already covered under maintenance we had the charger plug go bad and they ended up sending us a whole new charger we had the issue when we first got this mower regarding the actual dud of a battery which they hand delivered me a new battery and made sure everything was working right on it. That's three things that I've talked about with problems that were all resolved through customer service 
and all rather timely with how quick everything happened on all of those. So I guess I've already mentioned also the problem with what the tires can do to your yard. So I would say that would be my number four problem, which isn't really a problem. It's just something you need to know to be able to avoid that. And I, I would say the last uh, thing I would label as a problem would be uneven cutting of the grass. And I told you I run my blades at the highest speed. Sorry for the uh, noise of the airplane above me here. But I know I talked about running my blades at the highest speed, so they're cutting the fastest and hopefully cutting through everything that's like thick and hard to cut through. But I will say it just always seems like when I go in a straight line and I've had a good thick area of grass where there's a very predominant line of what I just mowed, there's always just a little bit of unevenness. And I have not been able to avoid this in the two years. Like it's not horrible. And I think it just has to do with when you hit some of the areas that are a little bit more of the fine finer grass. So I'm not even talking about thicker grass. I'm talking about the finer grass. I get some of this like straw grass mixed with some tall weeds that like grow really fast. Those are the types of blades of grass that this thing actually has the most trouble with. And I don't know if that has to do with maybe like rolling over it. And then like 20 seconds later, you're actually finally mowing the part that maybe the tire went over and the grass just hasn't fully popped back up. That actually tends to be what I feel is happening the most because it's always a section, like almost the width of what that back tire is. And with how heavy the mower is, if your grass isn't thick and just like stays up after something rolls over it, if the grass lays down and it needs a couple seconds to, you know, like kind of pop itself back up, well, then you're going to be probably mowing back over those areas before it's even fully popped up and you're going to end up having some missed spots. So that is what I think the problem is. I haven't like, you know, fully diagnosed that. Sometimes that causes me to have to remow a section or, or hit another section again. And at the end of the day, what's that doing? That's using or consuming more power, more energy and making it where maybe I don't get that full cut of my two acres of property. But let's be real. These are minor problems that have been solved through customer service or just getting to understand and know your mower a little bit better. So nothing that I would say problem wise that would keep me from getting this mower unless this is where this is where I will tell you I would not recommend this mower to somebody that has three acres plus of property. I know they say it should cover that. I just I just wouldn't. And I think that's um, how it should be with anything you buy electric like right here next to me. This is the Ford Lightning. This is the electric truck that Ford makes. If I knew I needed to drive 240 miles to work every single day and my range is stated at 240 miles, well, that's not the right vehicle for me. I either need something with an ex extended range battery or I need to just be looking at completely different mowers or I need to do what Dane said and mow my yard in sections. That would be one way to do it. All right, let's move on to the last thing I wanted to talk about. My, my last main point, I do wanna talk about some of the comments I've received on my previous one year review video and other videos, but the firmware update. So there was a firmware update on this. I cannot tell you when that firmware update came out, but what I can tell you is the one thing that I know it did change was the display on this mower. And it enhanced it a little bit. It actually gave it a little bit more guidance, I will say, meaning there's more explanations on the screen. So you're not really having to take guesses at what something means. For instance, if your uh, joysticks uh, pushed all the way down and it's in the neutral position, it'll let you know that you need to pull your joystick up to actually get it out of, you know, that neutral position. So there's that. When you start messing with the actual speed of the blades and the speed um, of how quickly the mower is gonna run, it gives you these arrows and explanation of, oh, this is gonna help you cut more grass um, at a faster speed, um, or you can get more range by pumping it down. But they also added in the corner, which I really like this. I told you guys that I've had 88 hours of runtime on this mower. Well, guess what? I wouldn't have known that if it wasn't just right in front of my face all the time now. So the one thing is pretty much on all the menu screens, you can see your total runtime in the bottom corner of the screen now, which I like that. I think that's cool. But 88 hours over the course of two years, you guys can do the math to what that uh, pans out to. But you got to remember, I'm down here in Florida, you know, come December to... March, I'm not even using this mower for the most part. I'm using it for maybe doing just some other yard stuff around here. Like maybe I'm cutting some trees and limbs down and I wanna pile them up in my little uh, buggy that I attach to the back of this. Um, 
But overall, you know, we've talked about the maintenance, we've talked about uh, the problems that I've had with the mower. You know, we've talked about the range. I, I think that covers a lot of the important things on this mower. I'm trying to think if there's any like frustrations I've had. I know we talked about problems and I think frustrations are different than problems with a machine because these are just personal wants and needs. I know something I mentioned on uh, my previous video was uh, seatbelt pass. If you're not prepared for it, I do feel that this thing could throw you forward. There's enough safety built into this though where your blade should turn off. I don't think your mower is going to run over you. But talking about that safety leads me into one other thing that is a bit of a frustration. And that has to do with this seat and its ability to know when you're sitting in it. So there's a sensor in there. And if you're not on the seat, the mower will stop the blades and it will beep and beep and beep and beep until you either shut the machine off or sit back down. I can't tell you how frustrating that is when I need to like hop off the mower for a second, move something out of the yard, you know, out of my way. And this thing just starts beeping like constantly. And it's, and it's not like a beep delay and another beep. It's like a beep, beep. You know, I'm just gonna turn the mower on while we're talking so you can hear it. So we got that thing going now. Oh, there you go. There is the beeping. I need to figure out how to turn that off because that will drive me crazy. I can't walk away from my mower for more than five seconds without myself and all my neighbors just hearing this constant beeping going on. Uh, modification wise, the only thing I've done to this, I drilled a hole right through the, uh, the rubber chute that uh, helps shoot out all the grass on the side of the mower on the right hand side. I'll get you guys a little shot of that. I drilled a little hole through the rubber in the corner. I attached a a bungee cord to it and then I wrap that bungee cord around the handle that helps lower the actual uh, steel fabricated deck so that I can pull it into the garage and I don't have to worry about that extra like 8-10 inches like hitting stuff on a 54 inch wide mower. But going back to the firmware update, I was skeptical to do that. I don't like doing updates on anything electronic until it's been verified and confirmed that it doesn't go and mess up my mower, but I did it anyway. Uh, everything's been running fine. Uh, I did run it and I, you know, you just randomly have weird things happen sometimes with electronics and you'll forget about it and you don't ever think about it. But guess what? Something happened right when I went to do this video. I went to pull the mower out of the garage. I turn it on and when the mower is waiting to completely boot up, like the screen says Ryobi on it, you can still start driving and using the mower. Like you could turn it on, you could turn the blades on right away. Uh, you can start driving it right away uh, before the screen and the system fully boots up. What I started doing though, I took it out of neutral. I, sh I, I went maybe two inches and then the mower just shut off and the screen just shut off. And I flipped the key off and then back on. It didn't turn back on. And I was starting to think that's kind of weird. I took my charging cable. I plugged it into the back of the mower, which I know the battery is fine on the mower. I know I've got enough battery on it. I waited for it to boot up on the screen, you know, saying that it was charging. And then I just unplugged the adapter again, got back in the seat, turned it on. Everything's fine on it now. So that's something that's interesting and that just happened. And I don't like to hide things from people. Somebody might hear that and just, it might be a deal breaker for them, knowing that this thing could have some little problems like that. But I'm gonna go back to what I said about Ryobi, Ryobi, however you say it, and their customer service. They have been stellar. I've been extremely satisfied with the actual like mowing equipment division. I've never had to deal with Ryobi for like my other tools and recalls or repairs or maintenance. For those tools, I've really just used it for this mower. And I will say, I've been impressed, they've taken care of me. The biggest downside is yes, there's been a little bit of waiting to receive those items sometimes, like the charger. You know, I had to wait probably two weeks to get that actual charger sent to me. Uh, the blade adapters always come to me within a week, but that's after getting a hold of them. So it's usually not finding out that I need that adapter till I go to mow, unless I happen to have heard it right when it happened and I remembered let's call Ryobi right away. They sent those out rather quickly and then when they did deli hand deliver the battery to me which was the first issue I ever had they had a guy to my house within a week delivering me that battery as well. So 
Just wanna thank Ryobi. You know, I'm not being paid or endorsed by Ryobi to make this video, but I did have a couple of you out there ask for a year two review, but I'm still loving this machine. I just love the fact that I don't smell like gas. I love just doing yard work. I don't know about you guys, but there's something peaceful, relaxing, and fulfilling about having just a nice yard, you know, helping out the environment a little bit. We're not pumping all that gas back up into the air. I do get it. We're still using fossil fuels by having to charge this mower. There might be some of you out there that already have solar built into your house, and that's where your electricity is coming from, which is pretty awesome if you're doing that. But uh, for myself, I love the fact that I can hop on this mower, mow a little bit, go right back inside, and daddy doesn't smell like a gasoline walking through the house. And that's uh, something that I mentioned on my review of electric blowers as well, which now I've got the Ryobi blower. I used to have the Ego, um, ended up having a battery issue with the uh, Ego, so I ended up swapping over to Ryobi since I've got so many of the uh, batteries as it is. But that's another tool where it's like, I can take my blower out every single day and use that thing for you know, 10, 15 minutes, and I don't come in the house smelling like gas, which is a huge bonus and benefit to me. Like that was a big deciding factor in shelling out thousands of dollars for this machine, which talking about price, this thing was very pricey when it first came out. I wanna say it was six or $7,000. I try not to think about that. I think I've definitely gotten uh, the use out of it. For a, a yard like this, you're gonna be paying somebody over $100 a, a mow when you're talking about acreage like this. So I've definitely gotten my money's worth out of this. Ryobi's made it so I haven't had to come out of pocket except for just the actual blades that I replaced on here. And it continues to be a workhorse. You know, the most I do on this thing is like blow it off when I uh, finish mowing and I just uh, park the thing, plug it in. Actually, I don't plug it in right away. I'm a big, uh, believer in not plugging in uh, your batteries right after you've used them when you need to recharge them because they're just still like very hot and i like my batteries to cool down before i go and plug them in where they're going to heat right back up again so that's just uh, one little tip i like to do i think that's going to help with the longevity we probably need to do these year reviews on this mower for as long as i have this mower just to keep all of you updated and let me be the uh, test and the guinea pig but we're at two years Nothing major has gone wrong with this. Everything's been solvable, and I've got no regrets at this point for buying this mower. I think it was a good financial decision, but that's what I get for buying a bunch of land and needing to take care of it, right? That's the small price I gotta pay. I know I mentioned wanting to talk about some of the comments, but I've really already addressed a lot of the things that came up on some of the most frequent comments I saw on my previous videos. It had to do with the joystick, uh, to do with the price, also the range. So those are the three main comments that I get on the mower besides people that just like to hate on uh, EV vehicles. You know, I mean, anybody that is big into uh, the EV world, electronic vehicles, understands that there's a group of people out there that hate them, don't feel like there's uh, any benefit to them. At the end of the day, I, I think uh, electric tools are awesome. I love the Ryobi line because pretty much their 18 volt and 40 volt batteries are interchangeable through like their hundreds of different products that they have. So there is a lot of that yellowish green uh, product throughout uh, my house and my garage. If I turn this camera around, you'd be like, oh yeah, he's a fanboy. He doesn't have anything bad to say. Well, that's not true because my Ryobi tools do break. They do have to get serviced, but I think that's just something you deal with with everything these days. They don't make anything like they used to, right? Right. YouTube videos like this can help you get the answers you need and understand how to solve those problems when you do have them. My name is Dane. I appreciate you guys watching this video. I hope it wasn't too long and too much of a waste of your time. As always, smash that like button, hit subscribe if you like these videos. And if you guys wanna start seeing like more Ryobi videos from me, let me know. Like I said, I've got quite a few different tools and I've got a big enough yard that I'm using the Ryobi chainsaw, the reciprocating saw, the weed eater, and the blower every single week. Add on top of that, the drills, the lights, the fans, the impact drill, the band saw, the chop saw, no, not chop saw, the uh, circular saw. I've got quite a few of those tools. So if you're ever looking for a review on maybe one of the ones that I just mentioned, let me know, put it in the comments down there. Till next year, fam, keep it real, happy mowing. And uh, as always, leave me some feedback and let me know if you got any questions. Thanks for watching.